hello guys welcome to another youtube video um in this video we're going to see how to set up um new vim it's been a while since i've been posting here so i kind of wanted to address uh the last video that i did uh the last video that i did was a little bit of a clickbait video and it was a test i was actually very curious to see how people would react uh surprisingly i actually got more views than an educational well informative video about golding in mongodb and I, I don't know, I just found it interesting that I, I did get actually some views, even though like it's almost all negative comments. So I don't know, it was interesting and I wanted to do it. HTMX is this new technology. Amagen and other like popular uh, YouTubers are, uh, you know, mentioning a lot of HTMX. I think it's a good, cool technology, but I don't think it, that number one is massively adopted. Number two, uh, I actually tried it myself, not like in depth, but I, did make a front end uh, server side rendered application with Go and HTMX. Uh, you know, I was not surprised with it. So I personally don't recommend it, but I think in general learning is good. So if you want to learn it, go ahead and, you know, you can draw your own conclusion from there. In regards to Svelte, I actually think Svelte is a good technology to learn. I think it's more matured uh, compared to HTMX, of course. Um, it's more adopted um, in the industry, it's widely used, it actually competes uh, against React and Vue, therefore I actually recommend learning Svelte. Um, in general, I think it's good to always keep honing and keep you know developing and getting more deep knowledge in one technology that you have, may that be backend or frontend or whatever that you do as your main uh, program language. And then on the side, you can learn uh, maybe something that you don't focus on. So for example, if you do React and you wanna learn Rust, then make sure that you keep developing that React knowledge to become an expert on the domain of React. And then you can learn Rust uh, at your own pace. With that said, I was very happy using VS Code like two years ago, but I decided to give MVM a try for a month actually. The first five days, it was excruciating, <laughs> but by the second week, I actually started loving it. And I think a big part of it was me trying to see if I could do what I could do in VS Code. And obviously later I found out that I could do more. And that was with the help of a good new Vim setup and Tmux. So with that, what I'm gonna show in this video is give a really good initial new Vim setup. The next video, because we're not gonna have time, uh, but I'm gonna show how to do debugging and maybe I have a couple of missing functions here, but I think what I'll what I'll show today is an excellent start. And then the third video will probably be a Tmux setup. And what I'm showing is um, the way that I like to set up my new Vim, of course. Um, but obviously, there's a lot of popular YouTubers that have their own setup. So, um, you know, don't only see mine. I definitely recommend seeing mine and then seeing someone else. That way you grab what you like from my setup and then you grab something else. Uh, from someone else's setup and then you end up with the setup that you like so with that said let's go ahead and let's start with the setup hello guys so quick announcement uh before you continue into the video tutorial i recently created a discord community um this is going to be very golden specific and golden centric and the reason for this is you know i want to create a community where it has like a very specific topic yet you know i have here ross typescript python uh probably you know if there's more people interested in let's say sig uh, i'm actually interested in learning sig so i'll probably create a sig channel you know i'm open to discussing about multiple different uh programming languages frameworks and whatnot though just wanted to say um please do join uh, the channel, um, the Discord server, sorry. And I'm gonna put the link on the comment uh, section below. So yeah, uh, by all means join if you wanna you know, comment with people and whatnot. I literally opened this a day ago, so it's very, very new, but uh, I intend to grow this community and hopefully we can help each other out um, with this. So yeah, um, carry on with the tutorial. Get 
out tmux. I'm gonna go to config to mvim and I'm gonna do remove recursive force. Duh. Remove recursive force mvim. And I'm gonna go ahead and create so uh, we don't have no nvim there. So I'm gonna do make directory nvim. Gonna go into that directory and create a git repository. Now this git repository, I already went ahead and created an empty repository. Where is this? So this is right here. So I just create a new repository, call it nvim YouTube and it's public. So this is where I am. So I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, add this commands. Now, this is not gonna work for me right now because I don't have anything in there. So the first thing that I'm going to do is Create a knit dot lua file, and here what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to lazy vim. So if you go to lazy vim and you go to installation, right? So just uh, lazy and vim, and this is the one that you want to, you know, look for. You go to install, it takes you here. So uh, I'm going to do structure setup and. I'm going to abide or go through this uh, folder structure. So I'm going to create the Lua uh, directory where the init is going to be the root file. Then I'm going to have the config. I mean, sorry, not another config, the plugins. So, and I'm going to have within Lua, I'm going to have the mappings, but you know, you can put them wherever. I, I just like to put them instead of Lua. You'll see how. Um, so, oh, by the way, and very important now that we're here, structure setup. I'm gonna copy this, I'm gonna paste this, and right now I want to delete that. Um, leader key, map local leader key. I don't really care for that right now. So, we're gonna quit and save that. So now what I'm going to do is first create the Lua, di a Lua directory. And within the Lua directory, I'm going to create a uh, plugins directory. And that should be fine. Now within the Lua directory, I'm going to create the vim options.lua file. And this ain't like, oh, nothing found on plugins. That's because we don't have any files on plugins. And the, the initial configuration here is looking for plugins and, and some Lua file within this directory that we just created. Since there's nothing there, obviously it's gonna give us errors, but do not worry. Um, let's just keep on going for now. Now this is my personal um, configuration and the way that I like to have the Vim Key, well, not key bindings, but uh, my, you know, my mappings, the tabs, uh, having the relative number, that, that's the way I like to set it up. And the escape, I map it to JK, but feel free to, I've seen people using double J, uh, that's not a bad option either. Um, so I'm just gonna write and quit from there. Uh, then what I'm going to do is add one file into the Lua plugins folder. And the first thing that I'm going to do is create the theme.lua uh, file. Again, it's giving me an error because remember that there's no file prior to, to this. So this is going to be our first file within the uh, plugins directory or folder. And I'm going to install uh, Katpuchin. So Katpuchin is like one of the most popular themes. And uh, if you go to installation, right? So installation, I'm going to copy this. I'm going to paste this. Now this is a table, I believe. I believe these are called tables on um, on um, Lua. And by the way, I don't know if you see, but the JK is not working. So, and why is that? Because I haven't uh, added, I haven't added that in here. So I'm gonna do require vim 
options. So I'm going to write quit. Now, let's see if that works. Should be very visible. There you go, relative and then insert JK, perfect. So now that works. Now, uh, what I'm going to do here is the following because before I encounter a couple of mistakes by not adding this comma right here. So I'm gonna uh, leave that as, as so. I'm also going to write a config function. And within here, I'm gonna bim command color scheme. I'm gonna do cat puts in mocha. I oh, this equal. I put that again, maybe. Ah, there you go. Okay, that should be fine. So this is what we currently have. So we have the theme, we have Vim options uh, with our custom uh, keys and mappings and whatnot. So the next thing that I'm going to do is install the following because I want you guys to, uh, you know, have everything that's needed before we uh, keep on going. So go ahead and do brew install rip grep. And we're going to be using for we're going to be using this for the uh, live rep uh, with telescope. So you guys need that and you need to install uh, nerd fonts. So if you just Google nerd fonts, go here, go to downloads, the one that I'm using and you can use whatever you want, but I'm using the men's low LG. So this, this is the one that I'm using, uh, but you can, you know, choose whatever you want here. And this is going to be important for the icons. Uh, so those are the two installations that are important. So after that, that we have that installed, we have the init Lua, we have the theme. Let's start installing a uh, NeoVim tree. Uh, so we're going to go here, NeoVim tree. So we're going to use this and we can go into, I know that there's like a wiki. So it's installation. We're going to be using this. So for lazy Vim Lua plugins, then we're going to do and Vim tree dot Lua. And I'm going to paste that. Now let's see if it works. And it does. Uh, and this is why I love MVM tree compared to Neo tree. Um, there's a couple of things that we're missing, but for example, um, you know, you can just do nvim dot and, and you're gonna see the sidebar right away. But now, you know, it's easier to navigate the project. It, it should it should have a uh, key binding. Plugins inventory. Okay, so I don't have any key bindings here. That's fine. I'm just missing, which is a toggling, which I, you know, I love the way that that works. It's actually not much. I'm gonna go here and paste that and load it, neuter, neuter car inventory. So I'm also gonna create a, a, a variable or constant, okay. So now let me show you. You see how with Control N you can toggle. That's what I like about uh, MVM tree. Now, what I also like to do is navigate uh, with my keys between the sidebar and and the file. Uh, you can also let's say that I choose this and you choose to split. I like to navigate between my two files. So right now we cannot do that. So in order to do that, we're going to install something called uh, navigation keys. There you go. This is what I'm looking. So Vim Tmux Navigator, uh, this Chris Toomey. So this for kind of have like that uh, Vim Tmux um, um, behavior, but in of them. So essentially, you just copy this, and it works. It's it's that simple. Now let's use NeoVim tree. Uh, the way that we can, you know, 
use this now i don't know if you see at the bottom how we're adding the file navigation keys.lua gonna paste that quit um plans navigation keys okay so there's probably an area navigation keys oh i need to return this very important and there you go so now i can switch between um between files so now if i put you know this i have one file here the other file there with l you go right uh, j up k down or you know whatever same as vim now what i want to show you guys is the dressing so dressing dot well yeah dressing dot lua And let's look for dressing and vim. And you know, this is just for, uh, you see how you create a new file. It actually looks nicer. That's it. It's not that much, but it does make a difference. Literally, that's it. So I'm gonna go here. Uh, don't forget to put the return, right quit. So now, uh, having dressing, uh, let's do the next plugin and I'm going to add telescope. So see how now we have this, uh, file. It looks much nicer than having it at the bottom. Uh, so, uh, just so you guys, you know, have that in mind. So I'm going to put, uh, telescope dot Lua. So here again, don't forget to return. Let's go to telescope. Um, I remember that I have to go into the wiki installation. Uh, let's see. You see lazy bim. Okay. I can just copy this. Um, so let's put that there. Right. Quit all. And Vim. So now Telescope is installed. Obviously, we need some key bindings. So I'm gonna uh, put my key bindings there. And I'm, I actually see a couple more dependencies. So let's do, and we can use Telescope. So Telescope, uh, find files. And then I can type telescope. So we're going to build that into this because uh, we don't want to be able to, I mean, we don't want to be typing that all the time, of course. Um, so let's see, these are our dependencies. And below that, I'm gonna put config equals function and end. And then in between the functions, I mean, between the config function, uh, I'm actually going to copy paste this so we don't take too long. But essentially, control P will look for files. Double space will look for alt files. Uh, space FG, and this is why we need rip grep. Uh, this is the live grep. And then FH will be help tags. Now for dependencies, because we're going to be using uh, a couple of um functionalities so we have plenary but additionally we want to use uh these other dependencies and that should be good enough so now um i can do this Super useful. I, I, I love this um, package or this uh, plugin. Amazing. I think something that is very important, auto pairs. Let's say that I go into, let's say telescope and I open a bracket. Um, you know, I don't have that like closing bracket. 
So we normally use auto pairs for this. So I do auto pairs dot Lua. So I'll go here, return. So let's see if this is fairly simple. I believe that's just it. I remember having some additional configurations. Uh, okay, so let's go with the default. So, okay, we have that there. Attempt, oh, maybe I forgot the, the return, yes. Let's try that again. Auto pairs. So now you see how we have the uh, uh, open and close. Okay, it doesn't work with that. <laughs> it does work with parentheses or with square brackets. So that's, that's pretty nice. But let's see if we can expand this a little bit more. And I'm gonna make use of a completion um, uh, library. So here I'm gonna add some dependencies. Well, actually this function, I'll leave that there. So those are my dependencies. That's the library, uh, which also will later uh, make use of this for completions. But for now, we'll set that up there for um, open and close in parentheses completion. Um, again, I'm going to copy paste this to make this a little bit quicker. So uh, this is the way that I'm going to leave it. This has worked for me before. So I'll leave that like so. I don't think I'm missing anything. No, okay. Again, by the way, so uh, I'm guiding myself through this repo right here. So it's Vim alternative. I'm posting this in the comments again. And additionally, um, I'm going to put, I'm going to actually commit the one that we're creating right now. Uh, so actually what I can do is the following git add git commit added plugins up to auto pairs. Okay, so now I can do that. So this is the one that we're doing in real time where we have the Lua, the plugins and everything that we've done so far. So I'm gonna put both so you guys can see and compare see what you like, see what you don't like. If you wanna go ahead and start doing stuff on your own, by all means. So I'm gonna put both, okay? Uh, okay, so carrying on. Uh, so we have auto pairs. Now I wanna put uh, Lua line. Lua line is mainly for the looks. Uh, it does have some functionality, but you know, this goes at the bottom and that's that. It, 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 you know, there's not much more than that. It tells you whether, you know, in what branch you are, in, you know, in the respective file. So it's about, about it. Uh, so now I can go here, Lua line dot Lua. Okay, so now you see um, this is the Lua line. Obviously, it looks super poor, <laughs> and there's no um, modifications there, no like uh, setup, customization, and whatnot. So um, you guys can see what I have here on my Lua line. So. The way that I have it is the following. I have the theme Dracula. Now this you may not see, but these are like the, I have like the uh, half squares here. So it gives like a, like the border radius, kind of like a pill like. Uh, so both, both for left and right. I added some padding and then um, I believe 
these are like the like the sections that you can put. So what I'm going to do, I already have this. So I'm gonna copy everything in the setup, which is from here to there. And let's go here. Uh, so I'm gonna do config equals function. And then I can go ahead and paste that. So this, this is what I was talking about, the half squares. And then these are like, you know, the progress, the branch, file name, file format. So that is the information that we're gonna see in the Lua line. And here, as you can see, uh, format, branch. Uh, right now we're not in a specific file, but now you can see the file. Uh, next thing that we're going to add is tree seeder. Even though we have here some sort of format, um, let me see if I can open some project. Uh, so I'm going to now make use of this. Look, look how, well, hmm. Let me see if, if, if I have to clean some stuff. No. Uh, okay. Here you can see that everything is like, white um, colored the text and we want to have some sort of um, parsing we want to be able to distinguish if this variable is different if you know this a method of a struct so that's what tree seeder does tree seeder parses through your uh, programming language and then you can differentiate like it, it gives you like this coloring amongst other things um, uh, which I mean I don't know if like there's some library there that it's already applying some sort of tree sitter but but it'll give additional like uh, parsing and and key, uh, keyword difference differentiation yeah differentiation differentiation yeah I don't know how you pronounce it anyway uh, so let's go to tree sitter you go here uh, you know, this is the, the main, the main uh, page. You got to look for the wiki. Installation page from wiki. <laughs> um, okay, so you just go there. Um, Lazy Vim. So this is a setup that I am using with some other uh, languages that are not these ones. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to go here to, there you go, and vim dot. So here I'm going to add um, tracer dot lua. I believe I have it, yeah. So I'm going to copy that and then this right here, I'm going to delete and I'm going to put the programming languages that I have. So it's exactly the same thing, but with my, you know, default setup, which is that. Let me see if I didn't miss anything, highlight, enable true. Sync install, indent, enable, one, two, three, four. Uninstall true. So, meaning that if there are no Tricitor uh, parsers installed, uh, install them. Okay, so that's that. So, well, we can check. Let's see this instance. Resource in your config is not appliance tracer. Okay, so I have a typo, so. Yeah, I have a typo. Config, and then. Uh, Resource in your config, okay, okay. So this in tracer. Oh. 
I'm missing return. Require lazy setup. What? Okay. Yeah, that was odd. Um, didn't catch that, but now that should be fine. Okay. All right, cool. No errors. Let's see if that's picked up from here. And there you go. Again, not not that much more color, but at least you can you, you can tell the difference. You know, this instant instead of being all white, you can see like two or three different colors, even four actually. So it's working. So perfect. Uh, so now um, we're going to go ahead and do completions. So for completions, uh, what do I mean by completions? Completions is whenever you write something and you want to have like all those suggestions. Uh, that's what the completion uh, package will do. So we're going to be using um, this username uh, nvim completion. And let's see where the installation file is. Actually, they don't mention much there uh, for installation, but here's my completion. Um, so let me explain a little bit of what I'm doing. So we have Lewis snips, which are snippets for auto completion, mar snippets, uh, VS code like pictograms, snippet engine. So uh, all of this is in order for us to have snippets working. Um, we're going to make use of those libraries. Um, so this is for previous suggestion, next suggestion, scroll documentation. Whenever you see like a snippet, you use like the control B, control F, control space to complete, uh, control E to abort. So that's essentially it. I just wanted to explain so you guys can, you know, understand what's going on for the completions, but long story short, this file is the one that is going to allow us to get those completions. So I want to show you quickly before I do the, 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 the creation of that. So let's say that I want to do, um, I don't know. So below request that no line 17. So here I'm going to put another so so it's very telling that I'm going to write string, but there's no auto completion, right? It's quite easy to spot. So plugins add completions. Is it completions? Completions. Yeah. Completions dot Lua. So I'm going to copy paste that uh, because I, I don't see the point of you guys seeing me writing this. Uh, so I'm going to write that. Um, the packages that we need, the dependencies are installed. So now I can go to a TypeScript uh, file. So I'm going to do requests.store. And now here you can see, let's say, another example of type. And now you can see how like it gives you suggestions. And that's what we want to do. So now we're moving into more interesting territory, which is the LSPs, which are language uh, server protocols. So these are the ones that are going to check for, for example, you're creating a function and the way that you're setting it up in, I don't know, Golang is not the right way. Uh, the, that's what the LSPs are going to um, be there for. They're going to check whether you're doing things right or wrong in a certain language. So in order for us to have LSPs, we need a LSP manager or Mason. Mason is a package manager exclusively for LSPs that deals with uh, installation, updating, uh, or you know it displays like the things that you can have. So here I'm going to, I'm going to add Mason.lua. Um, um, I'm going to go with the default and then I'll show you what I have. 
configuration. Okay, so to install, so basically you just write this. So let's go into our Vim setup and I'm going to do a return. So very simple. And then uh, for the setup, you just write that, which is the config equals function and then write that, right? Very simple. Then for the configuration, inside of your require um, declaration, you can write this, which is the UI shows like a check mark for installed, package pending, package uninstalled, so on and so forth. So I'm just gonna put that there which some formatting would be nice. Uh, well, we're gonna add formatting, but at the end, uh, not yet. So, now we should be able to see Mason. So I'm gonna quit this lazy window and we should see Mason. So this Mason. So LSPs are language server protocols, so you can install, so this, these are the ones that I had previously, I think these are cached. Um, I'll, I'll show you how I set up my uh, LSPs in Mason. Uh, so DAP is debugger, then you have your linters, and then the formatters, which we're going to be using this for my formatters uh, later too. Uh, so now I'm going to show you how I have Mason so Mason, so that goes there. Okay, so I call this require, so, okay. Am I using Mason again only? Nope. All right, so yeah, I guess we could avoid this, it's fine. Uh, but this, okay, but then this go outside this because it's redundant because we're literally doing the same thing in line in line 11 here so now that we have that outside of the setup we can then put the servers in four matters okay Let's see that we don't get any errors. Okay, we do. Mason tool installer. Uh, probably I forgot a couple of dependencies. Yep. So don't forget to add these dependencies as I did. Um, and there you go. And we shouldn't get any errors now. You don't need the who is set dyno for now, but it, it'll be useful for formatting. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add this uh, already. Um, again, this is a default setup, just as we had it. I just added these two variables in order to reference them here, which will make sure that we have the LSPs installed and that we have the formatters installed okay the last thing that we are missing is completion i mean completion but also like file manipulation and whatnot which i think is really cool actually something cool that you can do in uh, with dressing you can create a folder and a file or same with nvim tree so this is going to be this is going to be <laughs> lsp uh, config .lua. Also, I want to make sure that in init.lua I have import uh, lsp plugins.lsp. Okay. So 
So let's just make sure that, okay. Okay, so this is just saying that lsp config is giving me an error. That's fine. Vim. Well, lsp config and vim lsp config. And also here, we're going to go to the configuration setup. Uh, server configurations. Okay, not useful. I'm not finding this, so I'm just going to show you my personal one. So it gives you a very vague um, way of configuring um, the LSP config. So it's, for example, if you have Rust Analyzer installed, which is what we had in Mason. So uh, just to show you guys, so Mason, so let's say I don't have Rust Analyzer here, but let's say Svelte, right? Uh, which I don't know why I have Svelte. I, don't, I have never used it. Uh, um, but for example, let's say you have Rust Analyzer, you can replace this with whatever, and then you have your settings, Rust Analyzer. So that's the way that we are going to configure this. Uh, again, not much, not much of an explanation, but you know, that's uh, what we have. I do have mine um, in the following way. So, um, and I've used someone else's configuration for this. Basically what we're doing here, first we're adding some key bindings in order to do some file operations, I guess, file interactions. So that's like the go to definition, right? Go to definitions, go to declaration, go to references, um, go to implementations, uh, check definitions, CA is C available code actions. Uh, leader D. So, um, actually this is very useful, uh, the diagnostic. So leader, um, shift D or leader D. So with leader D and leader shift D, uh, you can see diagnostics. So opening bracket D is going to like next diagnostic. So you have a couple of Linton errors. You can traverse through them in that way with, um, opening bracket D or closing bracket D. And this is just how the documentation here, uh, not, not Mason, uh, this one, we're kind of like going through the implementation, but a little bit more in depth. And by the way, so here I'm creating a, well, again, I definitely did use this from someone else, but here is the server name. So I'm creating a function so we can repeat this. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to put that on, we said, lsp config so i know that that's a lot of stuff uh, i'm gonna go all the way to the top return okay that's good so we have all the key bindings good we have the icons good uh, again i don't need the svelte function so i can get rid of that uh, and by the way this is a good time to add to uh, the repo Perfect. So now you will be able to see, and let me get out of here. Perfect. So now I'm going to go to request a store. Uh, aha. Now we get that, that error, which is good. So now if I do leader D, uh, you see the diagnostics. So whenever you have like a huge line that has happened to me before, it's annoying. So with uh, leader D, you can see in, in a nicer and more compact way. Leader shift D, then you see it on telescope. Uh, so leader CA, so move to new file. Um, definitely these are not uh, code actions that I want to uh, do. Uh, so we have an error here. Uh, can I close the last window? Cause I should, I should see my telescope working, but let's see. Uh, what was it? What was that store? 
Uh, but just an error. But there's my um, number line, so that's fine. Now, also something very important: requests page. If I go to, for example, get all requests. For example, GD it goes there. If I go here and do GD, which is go to the definition, it goes to the other file. Obviously, very useful. If I do G Shift R, it shows me all the references. Then GI, the implementations. And you know, if I do Shift K, it shows me like what it does. Um, you know, so very useful mappings. And all of those mappings are going to be uh, again on LSP config. So just go through this map and see what you like, change whatever you'd like, and so on and so forth. And same with the servers. Go ahead and set up the way I, that you want to set this up. Lastly, uh, I think that this is a very cool um, package is the formatting one. So this is going to be outside of um, the LSP. This is going to be here. So for matting Lua. And uh, we're going to be using conform for this. So we're going to go here. Installation. This is literally it. conform. So return. We're repeating that there. So that's it. But obviously, this is not going to work. So setup. So the minimal setup is we're going to run the setup. So remember, we're going to put the config equals function. Now we have the completion. That's actually very nice. And I can put uh, CA clear all preemptive spaces. That's nice. Now, okay, actually, I need also some um, <laughs> key bindings in order to make this work. Let's see if there are some here. Command. Okay, no. So I'm just gonna show you guys what I have. So these are the four matters that I have that I also have installed with Mason. Um. So we already have all of this. We have lazy true, I believe. No, we don't have that. So we'll we'll add that. So the event, these are to add buffer events, which we also don't have. The config, okay, and then the conform, okay. So we're gonna overwrite a, a lot of stuff actually. Uh, so I'm gonna get rid of whatever we had before options we're not really using options either way so we have it as that now and i'm gonna do right quit uh, formatting and so right now the formatting actually it doesn't it doesn't look that bad but so you you, you saw how like saving it like kind of like dragged it back I personally don't like the way that looks, uh, not look, sorry. I don't like the way that works because I want to format whenever I want to format and not when, uh, when the file saves. So what I have is this key binding, which is leader uh, map leader MP, and it formats the file uh, when we type that. So. If I go here to my project, if I save, it doesn't format, but if I do MP, uh, leader MP, there you go. So that works. And I'm gonna do a Golang 2, just so you guys see. So let's say line 27. So I save, obviously that's poor formatting, liter MP, and it puts it back with proper format. That's what I love about the formatting, uh, especially conform. It's very useful. Um, and I don't like having this unsafe, but if you wanna have this unsafe, you can you know, uncomment that. And here you can just go ahead and install your 
uh, formatting, uh, your formatters for your specific program language. And yeah, with that, you are set. Okay, so that is gonna be uh, all for today. So if you like this video, um, give it a like, um, subscribe if you are not subscribed and share this. And um, on the next one, I'm gonna show how to add the debuggers, uh, probably how to add some Git, uh, lazy Git that I've been using lately that I think is really cool. And maybe some other things that I didn't have time to show in here. Uh, this video is already long as it is. So yeah, I'm gonna stop here. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.